of how the OR works. And an OR is only ever false when both of them are simultaneously false. So here's, here's where we've got two falses. False, false. It's false here. It's not here. Any other double falses? There is here. Okay. And there's no other double falses in these, down these particular two columns. So everywhere else it must be true. Okay. And then what we have is, so we've done the Q or the OR. Okay. So then what we'll do is we'll AND it with the P. So we have P AND it with Q or OR. Okay. So now what we have is, okay, so the AND, the left upper AND is the P values, which are all evaluated here, and the Q or the OR values are all evaluated here. So an AND, the way the AND works is an AND is only ever true when both of the inputs are simultaneously true. So in this case here, we're looking down the P column and the Q or the OR column for two true values. Well, there's none there, there's none there, there is there. There is here, and there is here. So the last three have double truths. So we've got true, true, true. Everywhere else must be false. Okay. Okay, brilliant. So we've done the premise. Here's the premise's logical values, okay? Under, when we've evaluated, under, under, evaluated them under these conditions here. So the conclusion is P or the OR. So we need to build that column, P or the OR, okay? Now the P or the OR column, Okay, is the ORing of the P column with the OR column. Once again, an OR is only ever false when both of them are simultaneously false. So we're looking down these two columns for two false values. Okay, so there's two false values. There's not there. There is here. There's not here. There's not there. There's not there. Neither there. Neither there. So they're the only false values. Everywhere else must be true. Okay. And then finally, let's do, so this is the P or the OR. So now we've done the premise here, and we've done the conclusion here. So now we can do the implication, okay? So we have the P and the Q or OR implies P or the OR. So the values down here are when we look at these values here. Here's the premise, here's the conclusion, and we're dealing with an implication. Okay, so we know an implication is only ever false when the premise is true and the conclusion is false. Okay, so where do we have the premise true? Well, here's where the premise is true. Is the conclusion ever false in any of these cases? No, it's not. So we never have a situation where we have false. So what we have here is that this must be true, 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 true. Okay. So actually, what we've actually shown here is this, is that when you have a propositional statement that looks something like this, the implication, okay, the P and with Q or OR implies P or OR, okay, well, this is always true, no matter what inputs are actually passed into the propositional expression, okay, which from our perspective is really good. Well, it's a nice characteristic of our propositional statement. Our propositional statement, no matter what we pass in, is always true. So we call this a tautology, okay? So this is an example, this is an example of a tautology, okay? So a tautology, and I have a video on what tautologies are. A tautology is a statement, a propositional statement, that's always true no matter what the inputs to the statement are. Okay, guys, uh, once again, uh, my name is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I hope this video, another video in our series on propositional logic, and in particular constructing true tables for propositional expressions, uh, I hope that this particular video was, some way, it was in some way intuitive. And more importantly, I hope it was in some way helpful for you. Okay? And thanks for your time.